this camera here. Hit him, hit him. Yeah. Who? What? Look in the back. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's give him some glory this morning. Y'all glad to be here today. Hallelujah, Hallelujah Lord. Hallelujah to his name today. We, we just, I, I'm just grateful today. How about you? I, I know I am. And I, I can feel the worst of the worst. But you know what? I'm still grateful for him. Because in my worst days, he's always there. And even if you feel the spirit of heaviness, it says what? You can get the garment of praise. So if you feel down, you can you just start praising him. Hallelujah. Just start. I mean, the answer is start praising him. Don't make excuses for why you feel down, but just start giving him glory. And guess what? When you start giving him the praise, that weight is lifted up off of you and you get your victory and your freedom and everything you need. Hallelujah. So let's give him glory this morning. Hallelujah. Lift him up. He, he's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. He's above anything that we could ever ask or think when it comes to us asking for stuff. He is the God of the universe. He created everything. And for everything that was made, he made before it was made. Now, ain't that, ain't that something? God is awesome. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. We think we got him figured out, but he keep blowing our mind every day. Yes. Hallelujah, Jesus. I give him glory this morning. So, praise team, if y'all would come, I'm ready to praise God this morning. Lead us into the battle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right, come on then. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. How many know that he's worthy today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's worthy of the glory. Hallelujah. He's worthy of the honor. Yeah. He's worthy of the praise. Hallelujah. 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 This was for you, mother. Yes, God. I got a feeling everything is going to be all right. Oh, I So 
told me. Jesus told me yeah. everything is going to be all right. Oh, Jesus told me oh, yeah. everything's going to be all right. Oh, Jesus told me everything's going to be all right. Everything is going to be all right. Oh, Jesus told me, told me everything's going to be all right. Oh, Jesus told me, told me everything's going to be all right. This is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Whoa, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Whoa, this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. Oh, I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. One more time. This is the day. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. Oh, I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. Victory is mine. All right. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. Victory is victory mine. Victory is 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 mine. Victory
Peace is mine. Peace today is mine. I told that story. I told Satan. Get thee behind. Get thee behind. Peace today. Peace today is mine. Peace is mine. Peace is mine. Peace is mine. Peace today is mine. I told on Satan. I told Satan. Get thee behind. Get thee behind. Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. 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 We just worship him this morning. 
Hallelujah, Jesus, just for who he is. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Just for who he is. Just for who he is. Hallelujah. We worship him. Hallelujah. We love him. Hallelujah. We exalt him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because there's none like him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice to worship you, oh my soul, rejoices, take joy my king, in what you I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you. Oh, my soul rejoices, take joy, my King. In what you hear, and let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I, I love you, Lord. And I live.
Hallelujah. Let's give him some praise this morning. Hallelujah. We exalt thee because he is the king eternal. Hallelujah. We give him glory today. We thank him today for being who he is. What a mighty God we serve today. What a mighty God. Hallelujah. Just give him some glory this morning. Give him some glory this, this morning. Come on. Hallelujah. Because the thing is, the thing is, at the end of all of this, guess who? Guess who's remaining? Guess who's remaining? The King Eternal. Guess who? And if you if you are in Him and He in you, you will be with Him. Hallelujah! Uh, uh, come on, now, because it said, "What heaven and earth shall pass away, but My word shall abide forever." Hallelujah! So if you in Him and He in you and He abide forever. That means you going to abide forever. Hallelujah. Because the thing is, we, 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 we think we, think we going to live forever in the, on this side of eternity. eternity. But we ain't going to live forever. Not in this physical. Who would want to? Who would want to live forever? Who would want to live a long life on this side? Now, not to those who do, because I know mother, she's 100. She's 100 years old. You know what I'm saying? But who, who, when you look at these little movies out here, all these scary movies, these vampires they had, who would want to be a blood sucker for eternity? Sooner or later, the humans going to run out. What you going to blood suck then? I'm just saying, who would want to do that? I'd rather be in a glorified body with my father who's in heaven. Because this side of eternity, this stuff right here, no... When, 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 we, when we get to the, it, with, with him, provided that you live and, and represent the kingdom on this side of eternity. See, there are promises, there are things that he said that will be no more pain, and no more hurt, no more crying. He going to wipe every tear from every eye. No more deception. No more wickedness. No more evil. See, this world is trying to bring about a, a, a what you call it, a utopia. Yeah. They trying to bring about their bootleg utopia, but they just don't know it's going gonna, it's gonna to pass away. It's bootleg. It's bootleg because it ain't going to be no true peace. It's a false peace. And you, if you submit to it, you're going to be a part of that false system. Hallelujah. It don't matter now. At this, at this time we live in, it don't matter now. You're going to have to stand for God or you're going to stand with the devil. That's just how it is. So you got to make up your mind today. Where are you going to be? You going to be with God or going to be with the devil? Because at the end of all of this, it ain't no gray area. You can't live in the gray area. you either going to be with him or you ain't. That's the truth. See, we like to live our life in the gray area. <laughs> no, no, you ain't got you. You ain't gonna be able to do that. You gotta make your mind up. Now, Hallelujah! I wasn't planning on coming up here saying nothing, but um, I give God the glory this morning because He's worthy. No, don't be trying to get me to preach. I'm not preaching. We got a preacher. I'm not. I'm letting you know that right now. You might as well get ready because I'm not doing it. I'm just coming up here give you some word for uh, of encouragement and set the tone. Hey, Amen. What you you want a song before you go? What you you uh, okay? Well, hey, we'll give a we'll give her a reprieve today. So praise team, y'all come on back up. Just sing one more song and then she gonna be ready. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me get out the way. Hallelujah. Yeah, she said something joyful. Joyful, joyful, Lord. No, I don't know that. <laughs> what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow. Angels bow before Heaven and earth adore. Heaven and earth adore. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty, what God. a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before, angels him. bow before Heaven and earth, Heaven and earth adore. What a mighty, what a mighty God we serve. What an awesome, God. what an awesome God we serve. 
awesome God we serve. What a holy, what God. a holy God we serve. What a holy, God. what a holy God we serve. Angels bow before, angels bow before earth him. Earth Heaven and earth adore Him. What a holy God we serve. What a righteous God. What a righteous God we serve. What a righteous God. What a righteous God we serve. Angels bow before Angels him. bow before Heaven him. and earth adore Heaven him. and earth adore What a righteous him. God. What a righteous God we serve. What a worthy God. What a worthy God we serve. What a worthy God. What a worthy God we serve. Heaven and earth adore Heaven him. and earth adore Angels him. bow before Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore Heaven him. and earth adore Angels him. bow before Angels him. bow before Heaven and earth adore Heaven him. and earth adore Angels him. bow before Angels him. bow before Heaven him. and earth adore Heaven and earth adore What a mighty What a mighty God we serve He ain't no help today, right? <laughs> Golly. <laughs> what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before Angels bow before him. Him. Heaven and earth adore Heaven him. and earth adore What a mighty him. What a mighty God we serve. What an awesome God. What an God we serve. What an awesome God. What an awesome God we serve. Angels bow before Angels bow before Heaven and earth adore Heaven and earth adore him. What an awesome God we serve. What a faithful God. Yeah. What a faithful God we serve. What a faithful God. What a faithful God we serve. Angels bow before Angels bow before Heaven and earth. What a mighty God we serve today. Hallelujah. He is faithful. He is just. He is loving. He is kind. Hallelujah. And I thank him today. Woo, I'm excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning. I am just thrilled about the word. Hallelujah. But first, I got to give honor to where honor is due. I thank God this morning for waking me up, for getting me here safely. Hallelujah. I thank him for being the head of my life. And I love God today. And as God was preparing me for this word, you know, whenever you have to minister, you know, the word always comes home or it should. It should. Amen. It should. Uh -huh. Okay. And so I thank him for the word because I was able to get some something out of it myself. And of course, I thank God for our pastor and apostle. She is Pastor Dale is on her way, so please continue to lift her up for traveling grace. She should be in he, uh, here any minute. But I thank God for the apostle. I know that he's working on today. And I thank God for each and one of my brothers and sisters in the Lord because I consider you all my family. Amen. I consider you all my friends. Amen. So I just thank God for each and every one of you this morning. Now, I'm not planning to be before you long, but... I'm going to let God have his way. <laughs> Let's let me issue that disclaimer. Hallelujah. Because we're a ministry where we're not governed by a program. We flow by God's spirit and the anointing. Hallelujah. So I'm going to let him have his way this morning. Hallelujah. The scripture is actually just one verse. Just one verse. Because a lot of times we make this thing so complicated. And so I thank God for the praise team this morning. We don't need no music all the time. 
Sometimes God wants us to just get back to the basics, amen, where miracles, signs, and wonders used to take place. And sometimes we just get so caught up in entertainment, hallelujah, and, and all the lights. And I'm just like, man, that's, that's a lot going on. But sometimes God wants us just to get back to the basics. So this morning, I'll be coming from Romans chapter 5, verse 18. And I'll be coming from the Living Bible this morning, so you don't need to worry about turning to it in your Bible. And it says, yes, Adam's sin brought punishment to all, but Christ's righteousness makes men right with God so that they can live. Hallelujah. So they can live. Hallelujah. And the Lord brought me back to when I first came to Christ. Okay. Now, I, I didn't grow up in the church. Okay. Um, I knew of God. I knew church folk. But <laughs> I didn't grow up in the church. And to be perfectly honest, when I was able to make, you know, certain decisions for myself as an adult, I was like, man, I'm good. Right. You know, I'm, I'm straight because everybody that I knew was playing church, okay? I'm just going to keep it real. They were playing church. And the thing is, if you know me, I keep it 100. You may not like it. I may say some stuff that really make you mad but I will keep it 100. And at that time in my life, I was like, you know, I'm going to just do me. You know, I'm just going to do my thing. I'm not murdering nobody. You know, I got to work every day. I don't bother nobody. I pay my taxes. I got houses. I got cars. You know, I ain't never been on the system. You know, by my standards, by my standards, I was doing good, but I really wasn't. <laughs> Hallelujah. So God actually spoke to me, and as a sinner, I didn't, I didn't know what it was. It was the Holy Spirit. And I was born and raised in California, and I was like, man, I ain't never leaving California, okay? Born here, raised here, you know, it, this is my home. Had a house, you know, and... My mom left, my brother left, so I'm the only one in Sacramento by myself. And I'm like, man, these, my family, they done left me. I'm just here by myself. I got my daughter, you know. And so I kind of started to get, get restless. Okay. But I couldn't explain it because I was still in sin at that time. Oh, let me tell you, evangelist was off the chain. <laughs> now, some of this, unfortunately, my daughter is a witness to because at that time I would I really didn't care I you know certain things yeah I did shield her from but a lot of the stuff I really didn't so she got it all amen and so one day I was like you know what I, I think I'm gonna check out Atlanta okay long story short I ended up moving to Atlanta I get here my brother leaves I'm like you the only family I got here you can go get up and leave after I get here. What's up with that? So I'm here by myself. Couldn't get a job. Right. Now this, this is, now let me tell you, even as a sinner, I had faith. I had a, I've always held a job since I was 14. Y'all know I quit my job without no job here. To move across the country with no job. Cash out my little 401k. I was like, you know, I should be able to find something in a couple weeks. Man. Woo! Nobody told me that I was competing against 10 million people in Atlanta. So, you know, <laughs> times was rough. <laughs> you know, so I finally got a job, and it was working at the Salvation Army, the headquarters. Man, I hated that job so much, y'all. I was like, Lord, if I could get hired at McDonald's, wouldn't even hire me, y'all. And then somebody, I had a degree. I was like, why I can't, why, why I can't flip a burger? Why I can't, I can't get on the fries? <laughs> I could not, because it really, hindsight being 2020, it wasn't God's will. He had a plan for my life even then. 
So at the Salvation Army, that's actually where I ended up meeting Apostle. And I tell you, he never said who he was, never said he was no apostle, but God showed him what I needed to hear at that time. I needed to be encouraged. I was going through some stuff with my daughter's dad, and I didn't want to tell nobody about it because, you know, I was Miss Independent. I didn't want to rely on nobody, you know, this, that, and the third. But he, uh, God used him to encourage me and speak some things into my life. So everything came to pass, and he invited me to church one time. That was it. One time. And I was like, you know, I done, I done been invited to church probably about a thousand times, like no lie, over my life. And this one time, I was like, you know what? One day I'm going to go. I'm going to get there. One day. So the things started to manifest in my life, and... Apostle had moved on. I was so sad when he said he was leaving. I was like, man, who am I going to talk to now? You know, you was like kind of my therapist and everything like that. So the Holy Spirit brought him back to my remembrance. He, this month, he done been gone some months. And the Holy Spirit brought him back to my remembrance. Like, you need to call him and tell him that what he said was God was going to do for you that he did it. So I did. And he was like, that's great. He was like, you know what? I would love for you to come to church and share your testimony. So I gets to the church. This is like March of 2013. And I gets to the church. I come into church, apostle in the, in the pool. And I'm like, <laughs> Albert, <laughs> Mr. Albert, what are you doing in the pool pit? <laughs> And, you know, that day, that's when I met Pastor Dale. As soon as I came in the door, I mean, her smile was just so radiant. And this lady hugged me down to my soul. And so that day, my life changed forever. Because that day, not only did I join the church, but I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And probably about, and you know, I came into church running, you know, I was like, man, I'm serious about this thing, you know, whatever needs to be done, I'm going to do it, you know, and people don't understand why I was like that. And when you know about my story, when you know what God has brought me out of, you'll understand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So about three months after I joined the church and I'm running, I got up one Saturday, it was whew, probably five o'clock in the morning, I go to the grocery store. It's nobody in there. And that was why I like to go so early, because I'm like, I can do my coupon in, you know, ain't nobody rushing me. And I ran into this guy in the deli section, older gentleman, and we made eye contact and, you know, I spoke and he, he stepped back, he said, mm. he said, you know Jesus. And I'm like, looking down at myself, I'm like, do I have a shirt on or <laughs> do I have, you know, what, what is it about me that made him say something like that? Because I was a babe, so I didn't understand that he saw the light in me. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I said, well, yeah, yes, sir, I do, you know. And he started to tell me about a near-death experience that he had. And in, you know, as he's sharing his story, he's telling me that he physically died. Like, he had a medical emergency, and he was pronounced dead. And he's telling me about the physical changes that, went, that his body went through, as he had died, because when you die in the physical, you know, that, decompo uh, that uh, decomposure, that, that process, it starts, your body starts to decompose as soon as you die. So he's telling me, he's like, yeah, these gases and this stuff came out. And I was like, bruh, that's, <laughs> that's a lot. That's a lot of information. But he wanted me to get an understanding of how far he was gone. The sheet, they covered him up with a sheet. They put him in the morgue. 
And I'm like, okay, why is this man telling me all this? And he said, that was you. And he said, I'm not talking about the physical. He said, that was you in the spirit. You were dead in the spirit. And so he told me that God showed him that I loved him, that I was on fire for God, that I had a zeal. And he told me, you keep that. And I promised him that I would. And not only did I promise him, but I promised God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I never saw the man again, ever. And, and this is in Stockbridge, y'all. Ain't but one, one Kroger in Stockbridge. But I never saw him again. But I never forgot what I promised. So God wanted me to talk today about the walking dead. Hallelujah. The walking dead. And we're not talking about no TV show. We're talking about real life here, okay? And when we talk about being spiritually dead, you need to understand what that means exactly. And it means that it's a separation from God caused by sin. Hallelujah. And what God was showing me in all of this, he showed me from, from the medical space, from the medical piece, that we are patients. We really are. So you have the unbeliever. And God showed me that that's somebody that's DOA. Because the word tells us that we come into this world sinners. Yes, my sweet little baby girl, my sweet little baby boy, comes into this world a sinner. The exception is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He was not a sinner. He was the only perfect one. Hallelujah. Now, part of the reason we're here today is because baby Reagan is being dedicated. So when the babies come into this world, they're saved through the believing parents. And so, parents, that's why it's so important to be a believer and walk out that salvation. Hallelujah. But when they get of age where they can make their own choices, they got to walk out their own salvation too for themselves. So that lie about once saved, always saved, that's some lies from the pits of hell. Hallelujah. So, hallelujah. So the believer, hallelujah, that is a patient that was previously revived by accepting Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. But the thing is, is that the believer has phases that they can go through too. Hallelujah. One is weakness. And when you think about the physical body, you get, can get weak for a variety of reasons. Hallelujah. Not eating right. Not drinking enough water. Hallelujah. And that comes on the spiritual aspect. That comes from not hearing the word, not reading the word, not praising and worship, not praying, not fasting, forsaking the assembly of the brethren. Hallelujah. You start to get weak. We done all been there if you really want to be real. Hallelujah. And what that leads to after so much time, it leads to illness. Hallelujah. And that results from continu a continual state of being malnourished. And much like the physical body, when you're malnourished, you can tend to pick up a whole bunch of diseases right. and whatnot. Right. And I was like, God, that is so true. And he said, there's even STDs. I said, no, God, you're going to have to break that one down for me. He said, spiritually transmitted diseases. I said, well, how does that happen? <laughs> the Holy Spirit said it comes from people, believers, bouncing around from church to church to church, not staying in one place, and you have a tendency to, uh, to uh, contract a whole bunch of different spirits and bad teaching, hallelujah, bad habits. You pick up all kinds of stuff. And I know if you've been at restoration for any length of time, we don't see some people come through here like, oh, my gosh. Woo. Help us, Lord. Because they done been around to so many different churches. 
and they can't they ain't never had no teaching they ain't never had no training hallelujah but guess what when you are properly diagnosed hallelujah then you can get a treatment plan you can okay you can get a treatment plan so you can get better but you got to be in the right place hallelujah you got to be in a place that the leader the pastor the leadership they care enough to be able to diagnose you right because guess what if it's left untreated you go to the third step which is death so it's so funny because i was like well lord why it why how is it possible for somebody that's saved somebody that's a believer to still be spiritually dead but the bible says that it says if the righteous is barely saved what hope is there for the unsaved? So that lets me know that there's a whole bunch of people in church that's believers, but they dead, dead, dead. Dead. What you mean, Evangelist Sand? I've been over the choir for 30 years. What you mean I'm spiritually dead? You're dead. Girl, you can't be talking about me. My, I'm prophetess. No, I'm sorry. You can call me prophet. Okay, prophet. <laughs> what you mean I'm dead? Dead, dead, dead. I've been on a deacon board, the deaconess board. For 20 years, what you talking about I'm dead? God said you're dead. Hallelujah. It don't matter. It do not matter, but that's why you cannot pastor yourself. You cannot allow the internet to be your pastor or Facebook or YouTube. You need a real live pastor. You need some leaders that are in that ministry that will tell you when you're about to progress to the, to, through these different stages. Because it reminded me of that movie called The Sixth Sense. Oh boy, I didn't even know he was dead to the end. He had no clue, had no clue. I see dead people. You dead. <laughs> he didn't know. And it's like that with another, a lot of believers. And that lets me know that the spirit of delusion, it is rampant. Hallelujah. It is rampant in the church. Hallelujah. But we bind that spirit today. It will definitely have no operation in here in this ministry. I can't speak for any other ministry, but we condemn that spirit. There I God, I pray that whoever is operating in that spirit, that you will open up their eyes. You will close their ears to the devil. That they will hear the truth and they will respond. Hallelujah. So the revival process, let's talk about it. Because it is a process. Not everybody just jumps up like me. <laughs> Sometimes it is a process. Amen? But ultimately, the unbeliever, they have to accept Jesus Christ for their, as their personal Lord and Savior. They have to. Because Romans 10 and 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth that the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, you're going to be saved. You're going to be saved. Hallelujah. But for the believer, it's different because you done already been through that. You've already accepted Christ as your Savior. So what's your excuse? Hallelujah. And God told me that the phases, everybody has to be carefully monitored. I'm not exempt. Pastor Dale's not exempt. Apost Nobody ex is exempt. We all have to be monitored because we are all, we could all fall any day. Hallelujah. So this is why it's so important for believers to be under a covering. Because God says that he will give you pastors that will feed you with knowledge and understanding. And they will watch for your soul. Hallelujah. You can't do that for yourself. If you could, it wouldn't be no church. It wouldn't be no Bible. I mean, 
if you got it. <laughs> but we know from, the, from reading the book of Revelations, that's not the case. We know that. So then God was dealing with me about first responders. Because at some point, you got you to gotta be mature. Amen. And God brought first responders to me. They're specially trained. Hallelujah. They respond in the cases of an emergency. Hallelujah. And they can get you to where you need to be to get help. Hallelujah. So that's us. If you are, you've accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, and you're actually walking out your salvation the best way you can, because we're not perfect. But God wants you to be a first responder. Hallelujah. And you can't be a first responder if you never go to outreach, if you never evangelize, if you never open up your mouth and tell, God, tell people about the goodness of Jesus. Hallelujah. And God told me to just put it out there. So I'm going to just put it out there. It's a doggone shame that we have so many first responders and uh, only a handful come to outreach. I, don't shoot me. I'm just a messenger today. But one hour, once a month, we all should be able to make that commitment. Amen. So hallelujah. So first responders, the emergency room doctors, the ER doctors, that's the pastor. Because what they do when the first responders bring them into the emergency room, they do something called a triage. And what they do is they make an assessment of the patients that's in there. And they say, okay, you know, this, this person, let me classify them as, a, as white. Uh, you know, they, they probably okay right now. They're going to need some attention, but they, they, they probably okay right now. Then you have other people over here where it's like cold blue, stat, okay, let's get them to the OR because they need some work immediately because if there's no intervention, they're going to die spiritually. And that's what the pastor's job is. The master physician, that's God. Only God can revive a spiritually dead person. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Only he can do it. Hallelujah. So I thank God. Looking back over my salvation experience, I'll never forget it. It was Pastor Bridges that took me down Romans Row. Hallelujah. And you talking about somebody that didn't give a flip about what I was doing. You get, and I know I drove my mama crazy, so the fact that I get it back sometimes, I'm not surprised. Because you do reap what you sow now. <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> but I, I used to have my mom on her knees, y'all. And she, I knew she hated the sin. She loved me, but she hated the sin. And I never felt no kind of conviction about what I was doing. That's a, that's a bad person. You don't never feel no kind of conviction at all. Even the world say everybody got a conscience. You know, I didn't have no kind of conscience. Y'all don't, y'all just don't know. I had no conscience at all. But that moment when I said, I receive God, I receive Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior, I began to cry. Because at that moment, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, Hallelujah. He was making, he was making an intercession for me to the Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. And I began to cry. And as I repeated every, every, uh, every word of Romans row, it penetrated my heart. And I said, I cannot do this anymore. I said, God, I am sorry. For everything that I've done, I am sorry. And I remember that as we closed out that prayer, how light I felt. I could not explain it, but I felt so free. Because free 
Indeed, I was. Hallelujah. So God is going to, he gives everyone the opportunity. What, no matter where you're at, no matter what phase you're at, as long as you have breath in your body, you can be revived. Hallelujah. As long as you have breath in your body, you can be revived. The enemy, he is the father of lies. I'm like, man, that's a lie. That's deep. You the daddy of lies? I mean, you ain't got no grandkids. You the granddaddy of all lies? Because he tries to trick us. And one of the biggest lies that he tells us is that we have time. Okay? And let me tell you something. It's young folk getting up out of here quicker than these older folks. You better thank God if you live to be mama's age, like for real. It is getting a lot more common for parents to bury their kids. So you should never just assume that you have time to get it together. Another thing you cannot assume, and this is something I was guilty of, I was like, <laughs> I'm gonna go to ch- I'll go to church, but I need to get myself together first. <laughs> I got to get myself together first, and then I'll go to church. Man, look, the Bible says that our righteousness is as filthy rags. That means you will never be clean enough for God. You better come as you are and let God do the work. Hallelujah. There's nothing that the devil would love more than for you to get up out of here, and you are still spiritually dead. And at that point, there's nothing that can be done. You you done, done, done. (laughs) Done, done. Well done. (laughs) Hallelujah. Right. (laughs) So no matter what state that you find yourself in today, (laughs) it's not over until God says it's over. And you don't have to be a zombie walking around here in the walking dead, as a walking dead. You don't have to be in that space at all. (laughs) hallelujah so I thank God that he brought me from that state and if he could do it for me he could do it for anybody so I thank God for the word today I bless him I magnify him and that's all I have That was a good word, you all. And it was true. That's what I like about it. It was true. I like how she talked about you done, done. You know, you get that piece of steak, and it's well done, but it be too well done, and it's burnt, and you want to send it back, but you won't be able to send that back. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God some glory for the word of God. Hallelujah. 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 I thank God that me and Providence Wallace are back. Hey, praise the Lord. We've been up since 4 o'clock this morning. Hallelujah. It took us five and a half hours to get back. I let her finish up because, you know, I'm going to drive 80 and she's going to drive 95. Hallelujah. (laughs) So I give God glory on today. Come on, let's just give him some praise and some glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is worthy today to be praised. Hallelujah. I'm just going to pray just for a minute, and then I'm going to turn this over to Pastor Bridges um, to lead the people to salvation. But I just want to pray in the sanctuary. Amen. Hallelujah. Father in heaven, we honor you right now. We glorify your holy and righteous name because we know that your name is above all names. We thank you, God, for the word that has came forth. And we thank you that people will receive the word, apply the word, and do the word. Not just come in here and be a hearer of the word and go back out the door and be the same old person. So we thank you right now for your word. Because your word is truth. We thank you for the service. We thank you for everything that will even take place. We thank you for your deliverance that will take place. We thank you for your healing that will take place in the name of Jesus. Oh, we give you glory right now. Saturate this atmosphere. 
hallelujah, with your anointing and your power. Increase it the more right now in the name of Jesus. And if anyone needs individual prayer, you can still come to be prayed for in this sanctuary. Hallelujah. And if you want to be saved, we will have the instructions on salvation. And we're going to ask if Pastor Bridges will come now and share. Hallelujah. But if you are in this sanctuary and you desire prayer, our ministers will pray for you. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. The word was good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank God for the word. It helps me to get myself right. Amen. And if I would just take a moment here and say this. Some folks, and I don't want you to think about this in your own walk, are living in a time loop. You get up every morning and you face the same dreadful reality, fighting the same demons, going out through your life being unhappy, being down, downtrodden, whatever. You just can't seem to get victory. You can't seem to get it. And then you go to bed at night. And then you wake up again and you fight the same dreadful reality over and over and over again. Same demons, same fight, no victory. But I come here to tell you that the Lord wants to break the cycle. He wants to break the cycle. But you know what? With me giving you that information, you got to want to break the cycle as well. He can help you, but if you don't want to come out of it, you're just going to keep living the same dreadful reality over and over and over again, fighting the same demons, same battle. And eventually what's going to happen, you're going you're gonna to pass from this life if you never get the cycle broken. And like uh, Evander Sand said, you're going to end up and it's going to be too late. Amen. So I just wanted to share that with you this morning, just to, 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 to get you to think about that thing. Amen? Because the devil wants you to stay in the cycle. He don't want you to get true freedom. He wants you to stay in the cycle. You think you're free, and then next thing you know. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. So for those that heard this and it touched your heart, and you desire to be saved or you desire to be rededicated back to God because you're backslid and you know you need to get back with the Father. You, need, you know you need to get, you need to renew your commitment to Jesus. I'm going to give the scripture today that you would hear it and that you would understand and you make your decision. Everything is a choice when it comes to you and your life. But I tell you one thing, heavily consider what I'm about to say because it decides your eternal state. So heavily consider it. So Romans 3 and 23, it says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's me. That's you. That's Pastor Dale. That's Apostle. That's everybody. everybody. Ain't nobody left out. Because like, and I like what she I like what she said. She said that when your babies came into this world, they came in as sinners. Now, did they commit sin coming through the womb? No, but they have inherited sin that has to be, that only can be washed away through Jesus Christ and his blood. Amen. Romans 6 and 23 says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. What that means is if you continue in your life of sin, you're going to end up spiritually dead. And not only that, if you physically lose your life in a spiritually dead state, you cannot be saved. So it's just like you working a job, you work for wages, you live a life of sin, you get paid the wages of it. And that is death. So we want the gift of God, 
something you ain't got to work for. We want the gift of God, which is eternal life through Jesus Christ. That's what we want. We don't want to work for sin because there's no reward in it in the end. That rhymed on it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hebrews 9 and 27, it says, For it is appointed unto man once to die, and then comes the judgment. So that means that we all, until Jesus come in the clouds with great glory and the sound of the, the, the mighty archangel and the trump of God, until he comes, we die. That means it will carry on as usual. You will die one day. But if he comes in the clouds to take away the church, those who are alive that are in Christ at that time, they will not die. They will be with him. They will be trans translated or transfigured into a glorified body at that time on the spot in the twinkling of an eye. But that time we don't know the day or the hour. So we always have to live our life in a state of readiness. Amen. And then Romans 10 and 9, she quoted it in her sermon. It says, for if you will believe the Lord Jesus he died and rose from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. I'm paraphrasing that. Um, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that the Lord Jesus died and rose from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So that's what that means. If you confess that he is Lord and you believe in your heart that he is Lord, you will be saved. But it's more than just. It's more than just uh, confessing. It's more than just believing because even the devils know that Jesus is real. If you want to know how they know that, read the story about the, the, the man that was possessed with a legion of demons. They said, have you come to torment us before our time? So people, I mean, the, the devil, the kingdom of darkness knows that Jesus is real. So it's just more than you believing that Jesus is real. You got to walk the walk. What it says in that word of God, the word of God, you got to follow and walk that out. So what you believe and submit to is what you carry out in your life. Amen. So if I if if you desire to be saved today, I want you to stand to your feet. Or if you want to rededicate today, I want you to also stand to your feet and come forward. And if you're online, you, you're, you're fine where you are. But we'll just pray this prayer real quick. All right. If you are Google trying to interrupt me, y'all, let me uh, turn Google off. Don't want her to be trying to talk. See, you don't even say the key words and it still comes on. <laughs> but uh, let's uh, just being disruptive. Okay, sorry about that interruption. <laughs> but uh, if you desire to be saved. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> I am so sorry. Somebody get this thing. Get this thing, please. Put it put it on silent or something. All right. So if you desire to be saved or rededicated, pray this prayer with me. And if you're in the sanctuary, stand to your feet and pray. Lord, Father, forgive me, for I am a sinner. I ask you into my heart. Save me, O oh God. Forgive me for all of my sin. Show me to a place where I can be fed with knowledge and understanding, a shepherd that will care for me. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, if you prayed that, whether you're online or whether you're in here, um, you need to have a shepherd. You cannot shepherd yourself. Amen. Many people think they can. But when you do, you you are so misled, and you don't even realize it. There's people that God raised up, people that God raised up to lead you, to show you, uh, lead you into truth. Amen? All right, so th that's that for that. And uh, we're going to go ahead and, and do the offering real quick. The scripture says that God loves 2 Corinthians 9 and 7. God loves, for God loves a cheerful giver, one that does not give in a begrudging way, but gives from his heart. <laughs> Amen? So if you are part of this ministry, we expect you to tithe. 
and bring an offering. Amen. If you are part of the online church, don't be afraid to start typing and bring, it, uh, and bring an offering. I'm sure that they don't put the information up on the screen already. If you're not part of this church or any church for that matter, you are welcome to bring your tithe and offering here. Amen. I think I said that pretty simply. Now, if you're part of another church uh, and you're just watching the service, you can give an offering, but your tithe goes to that church. Amen. So I just want to make that clear for everybody. That way we don't get it mixed up. And let me clear this up, because people got the tithe and offering thing all mixed up, right? Because they don't want to give to the ministry and all that. So I'm going to talk about this real quick. First of all, if anybody's in here that's very astute and has been paying attention all these years and reading the Bible, um, who feeds you with knowledge and understanding? The pastor, right? And... I go to the scripture. See, when, it, when folk want to fight me on this, I go to the scripture. It said, bring all the meat, what? To the storehouse. So that what be, there may be what? In my house. Thank you, a prophet saw name. So there be, may, be, may be meat in my house. Now, I don't see where the homeless is feeding you with knowledge and understanding. Now, I don't see where this cause or that cause is feeding you with knowledge and understanding. Y'all understand what I'm saying here? Now, God did say, go feed the homeless, clothe the naked, and all that. Th but he didn't say, take his tithe and give it to them. That ain't what he said. We got this thing twisted. We, we think we know what we're doing, and, and really, we don't. So I have to bring it before you because some of us have believed that. Some of us have. How you think we get these cameras, computers, and lights, and chairs, and all that? I guess folk just want to have a church outside on the ground somewhere. I guess that. I guess that's it, right? We just want to sit on the ground, have a church, and we ain't got no money to go do nothing. We can't go. We ain't got no gas to go feed the home. We can't even drive downtown. In fact, what? Why? Well, y'all already done gave your tithe to the, to the homeless. So, I mean, what we going to feed them for anyway? I'm just saying, I got to bring it out like it is because there's a lot of incorrect teaching on it. And all, all I'm saying is get it so you can be blessed. I stand here as a testimony. Amen? And I'm not going to dwell on it too long because I know I'll be making folk mad when I talk about that, boy. You talking about a spirit and somebody rising up, that rebellious spirit? Oh, oh Pastor Ben don't know what he's talking about. I'm going to still do what I do. I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying, but uh, this is what I'm going to do. See, Bud got you in trouble. Right. <laughs> Amen? Hallelujah. So if you desire to give, you if you have cash, you can see uh, Elder Bridges. Of course, there's a lot to give through Cash App and all that other stuff. So that stuff is on the screen. Y'all know what to do. Y'all do it all the time. Amen. We don't go through all that. And at that time, that's what we're going to call this at. Thank you so much for listening to me. And I love y'all. I still love you. I really do. I just want you to be blessed, but I got to tell you the truth. Amen. Amen. So we're going to go ahead and move into our baby dedication. And the pastor's going to come up. And uh, hallelujah. Can't wait to do this one. Come on, let's give God some praise. We're going to prepare for our baby dedication. And I'm going to ask when we do this, when the family and everybody comes up, that because we have, you may have people on the broadcast that's watching, um, that you all will kind of stand and leave the opening for the video and kind of face this way so they can see the baby as well. Amen. We learn from doing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So at this time, we're going to have our baby dedication for Reagan Harper Alea Faison. And this baby dedication is a little special because when Prophetess Liz had her baby shower, you had to guess the baby's name. 
the whole name in order. Did y'all hear what I said? And they gave out a list of names. I don't know if it's about 12 or 13 names. And they went to everybody on the little Zoom screen and asked you to name the baby in the order. Well, guess who named the baby in the order? The pastor. I said, hallelujah. And what was so special, Deacon Faison had done told her that's the baby, that's what the baby name's supposed to be. So God just confirmed it through the pastor. So I said, I give God some glory for that. Because I didn't have no conversations with them. Praise the Lord. So let me get that straight right there, too. Because you know, people say the pastor done talked to her and got the name. No, I didn't know nothing. That was the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So at this time, I am going to turn this over to Pastor Bridges, who will be presiding. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. First time doing this. All right. So I'm going to read this real quick to you for you uh, to hear. And then once I get the instructions, you do it. We call it now? Okay. It, it was it. I was following the script here. But uh, okay, if though if th there are those who are in here of family, the parents and and anyone else, siblings or whatever, if you want, if you're here to come and dedicate the baby, I would ask you come forward, please. Praise God. Hallelujah. The Bible does not teach or give examples of baptism at birth, but does give scripture proof of dedication and thanksgiving. Two of the greatest examples is Abraham praised God and prepared a great feast for the birth of Isaac. And that's mentioned in Genesis 2. Um, it says 11, 8 through 11. I guess that's what that is. It's backwards on here. Hannah and, and the dedication of Samuel uh, uh, in 1 Samuel chapter 1, 27, 28, and then also it's mentioned in 1 Samuel 2, 2 through 10. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. So we're going to have the prayer of thanks. Where's she at? She's behind me. Uh, prophetess Arne. So if you would come forward, we'll go ahead and give the prayer of thanks. If you all would bow your heads. Father, we thank you for this life. We know that everything, every child born is a gift from you. We thank you for the family that you have placed her with. We thank you that she has good examples of her parents, of how a king should treat his queen and how the queen should treat her king. God, you never fail, and we honor you tonight, today. We thank you that her siblings will also be examples of how to honor thy mother and thy father. We thank you for her future. We thank you for everything that you're doing. We thank you that her parents are mindful enough of you to want to dedicate the baby back to you. Lord, we present this baby to you. We thank you for her life. We thank you for her future is so bright. Her future is so bright. I got to say it one more time for the Holy Ghost. Her future is so bright. We thank you. We honor you. And it's in your son, Jesus, the Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> okay. Good radio. She grabbed her with power. Sorry, praise the Lord. I think that she was supposed to read a scripture, but I didn't think I told her that. But it's okay. To, hmm? You going to read the scripture? Okay, come on, Evangelist Sam. Amen, hallelujah. And I'll be coming from 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 1 through 9. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoiceth, rejoiceth in the Lord. Mine horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over mine enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation. There is none holy as the Lord, for there is none beside thee. Neither is there any rock like our God. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let no arrogancy come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty men are broken, 
and they stumbled are and that and they that stumbled are girded with strength. They that were full have hired out themselves for bread, and they that were hungry ceased, so that the barren hath borne seven, and she that hath many children is waxed feeble. The, w- the Lord killeth and maketh alive. Hallelujah. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. Hallelujah, Jesus. The Lord maketh poor and maketh w- rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he hath set the world upon them. He will keep the feet of his saints and the wicked shall be silent in darkness for by strength shall no man prevail. Amen. At this time, we're going to have the charge. Do you, the parents, grandparents, godparents, and family, present this child to the Lord of your own faith and acceptance in Jesus Christ, our Lord? If yes, the family will answer, we do. Do you, the family, renew your own commitment to the only God, our Savior, Jesus Christ? If yes, the family will answer, we do. Do you, the family, promise when your child is of age to teach her in the way of the Lord Jesus Christ, praying that she will, at the acceptable time, accept Jesus Christ as her Lord through your own godly living, example, and through the word of God? If yes, the family will answer, we will. To the members of Restoration Church, after hearing the confession of the family of Reagan Harper Alea Faison, do you promise to pray, support, and encourage this family's decision in dedicating Reagan Harper Alea Faison to the Lord? If yes, the members will answer, we will. We will. Amen. At this time, we're going to have the prayer and scripture of promise by Prophetess Shonda Bridges. That in blessing, Genesis 22 and 17, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. Uh, Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you for Reagan Harper Alea Faison. We thank you for her life, for the promises that you have on her life, that she will be blessed, that she will be prosperous, that she will be creative, that she will do many great things. We thank you for the giftings that she has. We thank you for the talents that she has. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you right now for your hand being upon her, for you encamping around her for a hedge being around her and her family, and for her just growing in full grace and strength and love in you. Thank you for all that you are going to do for little Reagan and her family and for every promise being fulfilled in her life. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. All right, Miss Reagan. Let's see what she's going to be like. the Lord. Hallelujah. We dedicate her. Hallelujah. Because she belongs to him. 
we give you glory, and we're going to present this. Certificate of Dedication. This is to certify that Reagan Harper Alea Faison was dedicated back to the Lord on this seventh day of November 2021 at Restoration Church of Deliverance International. Come on, let's give God some glory for baby Reagan. Hallelujah. And this ends our baby dedication. And please prepare your heart, your hearts for communion. I know it was the blood, I know it was the blood, I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, Jesus died on the cross. And I know it was the blood for me. Come on, have me say, say, I know it was the blood, I know it was the blood, I know it was the blood for me. At this time, we're going to begin our communion for those on the broadcast, and I will be reading for your hearing, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting at verse 23. For I have received of the Lord, that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, The cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. 
Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that drinketh, eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. Hallelujah. At this time, I'm going to have Prophetess Wallace to pray for the bread, followed by Prophetess Shonda Bridges to pray for the wine. The bread is the first element of the communion table. It depicts the broken body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this body that was broken for us. We thank you, God, for if it was not for that sacrifice, salvation, oh God, comes through that sacrifice. We thank you, God, for his endurance. We thank you, God, for everything that he did for us to give us an opportunity to take and eat. And it's by Jesus Christ's holy and anointed name we pray. We say amen. The wine is the second element of the communion table. It represents the blood shed of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your only begotten son being born of a Virgin Mary. Going through this life as a natural man and shedding his blood, being crucified for all of our sins. And we thank you that it's that blood that you see upon us that justifies us, that makes us righteous, that blood that washes us white as snow. And we thank you for the blood. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees when I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun oh Lord have mercy on me on the same night in which Jesus was betrayed he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he said, This is my body that was broken for thee. This do in remembrance of me. Let us eat. After the same manner, he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This is the New Testament in my blood. This do as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. The Bible says that they sang a hymn and they all went out and fellowship. We thank you for tuning in to our broadcast and you all have a blessed and beautiful Sunday.